What's up, everybody? My name is Nick Murphy. I'm one half of the Brothers Murphy, and this is 3D Gaming. 3D Gaming is where we take games off the shelf here, and we print out stuff, 3D print stuff out for those games. We're very excited to continue this series, and today we're going to be working on something that uh, is a bit of a resurgent for us, because we are going to work on something for the game Eclipse. Eclipse is a great 4X space game that we got years ago, and frankly, we got way too early. This game was too big, too much, too complicated for us, and so it honestly sat on our shelf for a long time, for a couple of years really, where we're like, we don't want to get rid of it because we know we're going to like the game. We just weren't ready for it. So recently, we started playing it again, and it's been very, very exciting because we really, really like the game, and now we're like, this game's not that bad at all, but for the time that we got it, it was a lot. So now that we have the game, we want to upgrade it. But one of the main things we wanted to do was make an overlay for the player boards. These are the player boards. They're huge. All these spots have cubes on them. They have cubes on them and all these spots have discs on them. And kind of like Terraforming Mars, if you jostle the table, all this stuff can go all over the place and it's kind of a pain. Now, originally I was like, I'm gonna design an overlay for the whole thing and I'm gonna make the entire thing because there's these, but then there's all these tiles here. And these tiles should be held in place too. And then all the shit parts, those should be held in place too. And then I realized that that is gonna be way too much work. It's gonna be a, like an absolute nightmare to print because we'd have to print it in four different quadrants because this is way too big for our printer. And these are massive. They're also double-sided. So the overlay would have to be open on both sides so that you could just flip it over. That's too much work. But nonetheless, we found some stuff, some overlays for this part down here. So let's go ahead, go to the computer, look at them, print them out, tinker, do whatever we need, and we'll catch you back here afterwards. Alrighty, so Eclipse. If you don't know much about Eclipse, this is the player board. I already showed it a little bit. Um, this is the player board, and we essentially are going to need an overlay for this section down here. Let me go ahead and zoom in that and bring it down because we don't need all this. We already talked about how we decided not to do the whole thing because it's just too darn much. So we're going to need this part right here is what we really wanted to overlay, especially the cubes. The cubes here, as you can see, there is 12 different rows of three. You have a whole bunch of different cubes and they can get knocked all over the place. So the first thing we looked at is we normally, as we usually do, go to Thingiverse here and we looked at different Eclipse overlays. There are a few on here. Again, everything is on Thingiverse. So this one right here is just a cubes overlay. You can see it down here. It's just to hold the cubes in place, look at them all nice in there, and they don't fly all over the place, and as you can see, this is a big game, takes up a lot of space, and having even just this little thing to keep things in place is very, very nice. We like this, but we thought, you know, it'd be really, really nice to also have something that holds your discs here in place, because all of these spots right here are where your discs go. So then we came across this one right here, which is very, very cool, done by Mr. J666, Satan, yes! And so this one is kind of exactly what we were looking for. Like, all right, cool. It covers the whole bottom part here, has all the discs, has openings for all the different like labels and stuff you need to see. Very, very cool. It's one piece. That's awesome. Let's go ahead and do this. But then we ran into a problem. This is too big for us to print. So I uploaded it over here to Cura. And as you can see, oops. And as you can see, this is too large. When it has these lines on it like this, this means, hey, this is too big. We literally can't print this and it won't let you prepare it or export the file at all. So then I thought about taking this and modifying it. The problem with Tinkercad here, which is where we do most of our 3D modeling stuff, is Tinkercad doesn't have a good slicing tool. There's not like a good way to like just cut something in half. Like, oh, I need this, but this is too big for me to print. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half. This side will be, I'll print this side and then I'll print this side. Yay, I'm done. Tinkercad doesn't really do that. I've looked all over it and everyone's kind of like, hey, here's a workaround for the fact that Tinkercad for some reason doesn't have like just a normal cut function. So then we were kind of stuck again because I wasn't gonna find an easy way to cut this piece. So then he was like, you know what? This is pretty simple. All it is is squares and then discs. Let me go ahead and try my hand at making one myself. So that is what I did. I actually created our own overlay that we could print ourselves. And essentially what I did is I made the cube part and the disc part, but then it cuts along this line right here. And it does have to move a little bit because these don't line up, so it goes up cuts over, boom, and then this is one half that we can print, and then we can print this half over here. And I'm like, it'll be fine. I can do things like this. And it ended up being way, way harder than I thought. So these four things right here, this is all the different 
files I had where I was working on different stuff. You can see the stuff for the discs and the cubes and like little these pieces right here, which I'll explain in a second. But one thing I do want to point out is what program I'm working on here. A lot of people have asked about it, what the program was. It is called Tinkercad. You can see us right here, the brothers Merp. <gasps> But Tinkercad here is a browser software. So you just go to tinkercad.com and it opens up. You can sign up and use it for free. It's open source. It's free. And it's called Tinkercad. So it's T-I-N-K-E-R. So just Tinker and then C-A-D. And C-A-D stands for Cornelius Applestrudel Dumpleskin, who is the man who created Tinkercad. So he wanted to shout out his own name in there, which I think is totally fair. So here you have all the different files, which I've opened up in here. All the different stuff that I was working on. This ended up being way, way, way harder than I thought. There's a lot of different stuff and it just comes down to like, you need specific measurements for things. But one of the main problems, and this is different from making like an insert in my opinion, is I need to measure out these cubes and how big this needs to be. But then you also need to measure out the distances between everything. So the distance between this number and this number, how much is this? How much is the distance between here and the edge of this circle right here? Because again, you need this to be open. How much dif distance between here and here, between here and here, between here and here, between here and here, between here and here. And so there was just this constant measuring and trying to figure out exactly what needed to be what, you know, in this circle right here is 17 millimeters, but this one right here is only 14 millimeters. So do I want to make them two different sizes or do I want the whole thing just to be 17? And so designing this ended up being kind of a massive nightmare because it was just this constant trying stuff out and like moving stuff around and being like, okay, so what's the exact distance between these two right here? And then essentially having to print them all out and do a ton of different tests, lots of tests. These are only some of the tests that we did. It's a whole bunch of different things. You know, we got like this one right here and we got, oh, we got this one right here, but we got this, this teeny, teeny little one right here. And then, and it just, it's, it's, a, it was a lot of work and it was a lot of testing because again, we needed to make sure that everything on the player boards here was fitted correctly. So we had to essentially test something out and then put it up here and be like, hmm, does that work? Oh no, that doesn't work. That's too much. Okay, well then screw that one. Okay, we'll do it again. Oh, now we got a better one. Okay, does this one work? Okay, cool. That works for the cubes right there. And it was just a ton of work. And so we have all these tests here. And again, so as I said, like these ones are just sitting here trying to figure out like, okay, does that work? Okay, that works okay. And then this one was like a really odd looking like broken part of a fence. But what this was, was for us to test out the distance between the cube part and then the disc part down here, which this test went okay. Cause we didn't want to print an entire thing because that is a waste of plastic. And if we get it wrong, we just have to throw that whole thing out. So we did a lot of these little miniature tests. I mean, all of these right here are just to figure out the size of these cubes. Like, is this gonna fit right Right here do all the cubes actually fit inside these it was just it was a lot of testing these are all the different individual tests we had to do so we have like bottom discs and right big right test and eclipse test and puzzle test puzzle test puzzle test puzzle test puzzle test all this different stuff top disc final maybe and ultimately it turned out fine but it was a lot of work but nonetheless we were able to do it so then i came down to the question of how am I gonna connect these two things together? Because I have to print them separately because I can't fit something like this on our printer. So how am I gonna connect this together? So this is when I had the idea of doing some kind of connector puzzle piece. So here are a number of examples of little puzzle pieces that we tried out. The first one we tried out were these little ones right here that we made, you know, trying to have something where you could lock it into place but the problem was is trying to get them to fit together was such a problem because this one, the opening one had to be bigger than this one. So trying to figure out how much bigger without being too big was just very, very difficult. And then we realized that this is probably just too small. So we tried to move on to like a more traditional kind of puzzle piece, which again, probably could have worked. But then the problem with that is this one right here is probably too long this way. We needed something a little longer this way, not this way. So then we tried out these ones right here. And these ones worked the best. We finally got to the point where we could make like a pretty decent little puzzle piece. It still wasn't perfect, but we probably could have tweaked it a little bit and made it a little bit better. But again, it's just too small and it just didn't work. And, and it was just, uh, it was just a giant failure really. And the puzzle piece failure really kind of drives home the main challenge with 
what we're trying to do, which is print stuff out for board games. And the main problem with that is, is the most of the stuff you're printing out is incredibly small. For If we're trying to make like birds for wingspan, if we're trying to make like little puzzle pieces like this, we just have no room to work in. And, and that's the problem is like these puzzle pieces could work totally fine if we could make them bigger. And that's what I think the, the main challenge that we found with this is the fact that you're just working in such small areas. That's one of the reasons why we had such problems with the wingspan birds. It was because they were just, they were like this big. They were like, you know, three quarters of an inch, which I think is like 86 centimeters or something like that. I don't know. Um, but it's just, they're so small that especially when you're trying to get detail on them, it's very difficult. And that's exacerbated by the fact that we also have a cheaper printer. Our printer is great, don't get me wrong. It does wonderful stuff and it's been able to handle all this kind of stuff like an absolute champion. But nonetheless, we do have a budget printer. And when you have a budget printer, when you're getting down to the really fine, fine details, working in really small scales, that's where it kind of starts to show its budgetness. Because a lot of times we're making such small adjustments, like I need this little this little opening here to be exactly half a millimeter bigger than this little protruding part right here. And on our printer, that's just kind of tough to do, especially because we just don't know that much about our printer. We're learning all the time, but there's all these different settings you can do. And especially if you're starting out, doing this kind of really small meticulous work is very, very difficult. And that's why we ultimately just gave up on the puzzle idea. Sometimes you have to be like, look, it's just, this isn't really gonna happen. This isn't really working. You know what? I can just have this one nestle in right here and then they will just live together like this. It'll be fine, no problems at all. So we decided to go ahead and do this one right here and then now we have printed one out. So I'll show you how it came out. All right, so here we have the two finished halves look at that they pop in they fit together and look at all that god did a good job designing it boom everything is visible everything fits in there it works out great now again we we got rid of the puzzle idea so they can come apart like this but ultimately it's not that big a deal and this makes it so that we can print them on our ender 3 which is very very nice so let's see how it looks with all the cubes and discs in there Alrighty, and there we go. So now whenever you need a cube, you just go in here and take it out, no problem. You need discs, you do the exact same thing. And I originally was like, I don't know if I wanna make it the same color as the cubes and the discs. I think it'll be too much color, but I actually really like the way it looks with like a black print and then black cubes or like yellow prints and yellow cubes. I actually think it looks pretty cool. And it also means that whenever you take one of these out and show what's underneath it, it really, really shows up because the change of color is very, very drastic. All right, so they are done. You saw them all put in on the player mat. Everything fits, everything is lined up well. The two halves fit together nicely, even without the puzzle piece, it's no problem at all. But here's the thing, I'm trashing these. And here's the reason. I'm not gonna call this one a failure because that's not what it was. These work great, these work fine, no problem. And honestly, like if we play the game, we'll play with these. These, these work totally fine. But I stopped after making two and here's why. One of the main reasons why I hadn't printed this out beforehand, but the reason I wanted to design my own because I wanted something that was going to stay in place on the player mat, which is why when I first had the grandiose ideas, I was like, I'm going to encase the entire thing in a print. That way, everything will stay there. Kind of like the Terraforming Mars overlays. They encase the entire thing in there, so everything stays there. This doesn't. This can slide around on your player mount. Now, the good thing is all the cubes and all the discs are in here, so as it slides around, your stuff isn't flying everywhere, but this moves constantly. When you go try to take a disc out of this thing, it just pushes the whole thing down and then you have to like put it back into place. You try to get a cube, you end up moving the whole thing and then you have to put it back into place and it drives me crazy. My original idea when I decided I wanted to just do this was to make a clip, a clip that goes in the bottom and clips around it here so that this here stays in place and this isn't constantly like moving around like this. But then I forgot that there is this numbered track here on the bottom. I thought that this butted all the way against the bottom. Turns out it doesn't. So I was like, well, I don't want a big clip going over this because it's gonna block some of the numbers. And so I was like, you know what? We don't need it. I'm not gonna do it. But now that I've designed these and I've built these, I realize I want the clips. I wanna find some way to clip them on there. I could just like paper clip them on there or do something like that, use binder clips or whatever, but I don't really wanna damage the player mats. And I just, uh, I don't know, I, I, I wanna design it, but I don't really know how to design clips, so I have to figure that out. So as of right now, we're gonna put this one kind of on hold. It's not a failure, because these work just fine, and I like them just fine, and ultimately they're better than the alternative of having nothing, but 
I want to design them with some clips that go on the bottom that don't obscure the numbers on the bottom of the mat. And so it keeps them in place and you can just hold them right there. And as you move your mat around, they go along with it. Um, and so we're going to revisit this one. I'm not entirely sure when there's probably some other stuff that'll come in between this episode and then the follow-up episode of the eclipse. But nonetheless, I, I want to come back to this. So I'm dedicated to making it work how I want it in my head. Um, and so this works fine. And, and I think ultimately these are quick to print. They're each like 45 minutes each for each one of these things. They're totally fine. It's easy, cheap, great but I want, I want a little bit more. So that is going to be it for this Eclipse episode. It's kind of ending on a weird note, but nonetheless, um, I'm, I'm happy with my design. I'm happy that I was able to figure it out despite the fact that it took me forever to do it. But nonetheless, I, I made it work. I'm happy with that. Um, and, and overall, this has been a success. And so um, thank you so much for joining me here on 3D Gaming. Let us know down in the comments what you want us to print out, whether it's playing for games or inserts for games or whatever. Uh, we want to do more and more stuff, but we really would like you all to drive the content if possible. And please make sure to like and share this video and subscribe to the Brothers Murphy if you haven't already. And so until next time when we revisit this or revisit something else, uh, this has been 3D Gaming. Thank you for joining me. I love you all. Have a great day. Hello, I want to let you know that we have a Patreon and that you should check it out. There will be a button some, somewhere around here probably that you can click to help out the Brothers Murph. Click the Patreon. Do it. I also got to let you know that we're sponsored by Restoration Games and by Game Toppers. Go to GameToppersLLC.com to upgrade your game and experience. Look at that label. It's beautiful. Oh, do it. Do it right now. I hate you. I'm sorry. I love you. Bye.